Hey everyone, Gary from Echidna here. Do you own an industrial embroidery machine or an industrial sewing machine that takes round shank needles? You know the needles that haven't got a flat back? Have you ever wondered what way they're supposed to go into the machine? Have you ever struggled to get them into the machine correctly? And do you understand the importance of that? Today we're going to show you a great new little tool that we've developed that makes it so much easier to put a round shank needle into your machine and get it correct. And we're also going to talk about just what, how that stitch is formed and why it's so important. So stay tuned, let's get into it. So I'm sitting in front of one of our Halo 12 needle embroidery machines and these are an industrial style machine and all the needles are a round shank needle. Now, I've gone ahead and I've 3D printed a big, big needle so you can actually see it. Um, this is, uh, for many of you, this is the needle you would understand. It's a needle for a domestic machine and it has a flat back on it. So with that flat back on the needle, it can only go into the machine one way. So on home style machines, it's not hard. You really can't put the needle in incorrectly, but that's not the case on this guy or any other industrial embroidery machine or sewing machine. They're all round shank needles. And round shank needles are a little bit more, um, they're stronger, they don't flex as much as a home style needle, and that's why it's the, that's why they use them in industrial machines. They're just going to work better. So, but there is a bit of an anatomy of a needle which you should understand. Obviously, uh, we've got this here. This is the shank up here of the needle, and then we have the shaft of the needle, the needle eye, the needle point, and more importantly, or most importantly, there's a thing called the scarf of the needle, and the scarf sits above the needle eye, and um, that's the part that has to be in the right position. Otherwise, your machine won't work. It'll miss stitches, break, break threads. It could even break needles if you put it in incorrectly. So that's what we're gonna go through today and show you. Um, and I wanted to also show you how we're going to use a great new little tool that we've developed called the Needle Setter. Now, this guy, um, this is one of the best things we've come up with, I think. We've taken the use of a, a magnet and we've, we've made our own little sort of um, needle inserter and setter. We've installed the magnet and uh, it's just going to be a game changer for getting those needles correctly because I can't tell you how many times I've had people call me and say, hey, my machine's not working correctly, it's missing stitches or it's breaking threads or whatever. And it ultimately turns out that the needle is not inserted correctly. And that every week there's calls that we have that it, it, that's the problem. But before we get into showing you just how easy this uh, new needle setter is to use, I'm going to explain graphically just how a stitch is formed and then you'll understand why we make a big deal out of needles being inserted correctly. It also will explain why it's important to get the right stabilization on an embroidery machine and, the, and you're using good quality thread and you're also using good quality designs because it all ties into that stitch formation. And um, I've gone ahead and 3D printed some more fun tools to show you just how that works. So let's take a look. So stitch formation it comes down to two key elements on the machine. One is your needles, obviously, and we're going to show you those. And there's also the hook mechanism, or the, well, some people call it the shuttle, but this is what's called a rotary hook. Where the bobbin case goes, that's what forms the stitch. Now, it's a bit hard to see when it's all enclosed in this tiny little area on the free arm of this machine. And that's why we have 3D printed a kind of a version of a 3D hook. So this is it here. And um, just explain what this is. So that comes out, that's the what we call the base or the basket, and that's what the bobbin case would go into, and it would sit just in there like that. And that sits inside and stays stable while the hook mechanism rotates around it. So the white bit is actually the hook, and that is the hook point just there. And that hook point will come by past the back of the needle and it will pick up the thread and carry it around the bobbin case and let go of it. And that's how a stitch is formed you know, every stitch, it, it, that's the process. And it's really important that everything is correct. So we've produced that. I've also produced a, a round shank needle, and that's this blue needle here, and I've got some orange yarn on there. Now this, of course, is a lot bigger than a normal needle, obviously. And um, what I'm going to do is use this needle and this orange uh, yarn that I've got there, and we're gonna simulate how a stitch is formed so you really understand it. And I can tell you where I've shown people this, it's like, all of a sudden the penny drops and you go, oh, now I get it. Now I understand why I have to get everything right because it's actually an amazing process, a stitch formation. So 
I am going to have to enlist some help in a moment because I will need about four hands to do this and we're going to capture it all on video and then once you see how that all works then I'll show you how great this little needle setter tool is to use and um, hopefully it'll solve a lot of problems for you in the future. Okay, so to show you how this all works, I've taken uh, a standard hoop and I've moved my hoop arms all the way forward so the hoop's gonna be sitting out in front of the stitching area. I put a couple of holes in this uh, just cutaway and that's going to allow me to pop the needle through there. So we'll pop this hoop into place and that's all done. Now I'm gonna take the needle that I've got my yarn on. Now this is actually a round shank 3D print. So I can see that my uh, front groove is here. So my thread's gonna be going to be coming down to the needle eye from the front. Behind there is the scarf of the needle and of course the needle tip down there and the needle eye. Now you can imagine when this is, imagine this is on the machine, the thread that's coming out of the back of the eye has would be going back to the previous stitch. The thread that's coming out the front of the eye is going back up into the machine and that comes down through the tensions down into the machine and through the needle eye. And here's what actually happens. So, it's really important to understand this. So I'm just going to gently push the needle down through here and you'll instantly what will happen is that the, the thread at the front will get directed into the long groove of the needle. And that long groove of the needle is designed to protect the thread and stop it from pinching and causing any problems. So that needle's gonna go down through there. The needle will go down all the way to the bottom of its stroke and when it gets to the bottom of its stroke, it will start to rise. Now, as it starts to rise, the important thing that happens is the fabric or whatever you're embroidering or stitching through, it will, it will put pressure and exert a, a little a pinching effect on the thread, particularly on the thread at the back of the needle because there's no groove there to protect it. And as the needle comes up, you'll see a loop will form just here. And that loop is called the thread loop, and that's what has to be picked up by the hook or the rotor, or the, the shuttle, if you want to call it that, of the machine. And that happens every stitch. And if that loop doesn't form or collapses or gets missed by the hook, that's when you get slip stitches, miss stitches. A few of those in a row will give you often a, a thread break or a thread shredding. Um, but at the very, the best result, you're just going to get an untidy stitch. But more often than not, it will cause thread shreds and breaks. And, um, and that process happens for every stitch. Okay, so now we're down into under the machine. So this is all happening back in under the, the shuttle or near the hook area of the machine. Now this is our giant rotary hook and I've, I've taken my bobbin holder out just so you can see it a bit easier. And what happens is this rotates. As the needle is coming up and forming this loop, this hook, this is the hook point here, it comes around and it goes through the back of the scarf of the machine and it picks up the thread and it carries that thread all the way around the bobbin case and then lets it go. And those crazy little levers at the top of the machine called the take-up levers, once this lets go of the thread, those take-up levers pull the thread back up and form the stitch. And that happens every stitch for every, every stitch you do on the machine, basically. And that loop there that forms is so vitally important. And the scarf of the needle, which is on the back of the needle, if it's not in the right place, that loop will not be in the right place and um, you, you will not form stitches and you'll have all sorts of problems. So that's why it's so important. An interesting thing also to note is that if you haven't stabilized well enough, and, and I may as well mention this while we're doing this, or your presser foot height's not right, or whatever it is, you will get flagging of the fabric. Now, flagging of the fabric is what causes this loop to not form. So what, if the fabric flags and it's going up and down and that loop collapses or falls, falls in the wrong direction, then that hook won't pick it up and you've got a similar problem to uh, the same problem as shredding thread or breaking thread. But that's what has to happen. That loop has to form. And you can imagine if we had the needle on the wrong angle, the loop will be forming on the, on the wrong direction. It could be way over here and the hook will miss it. So angle of the needle is really important. Stabilizing is really important. Quality of design is really important and quality of thread. All those things have to work together to form a stitch correctly. Okay, so we've established how important the stitch formation is. Now we're going to look at how to insert the needle. So I have my round shank blue needle here, and we're just going to reiterate again. We've got the scarf of the needle, which is that indented section above the needle eye. That always goes to the back on this type of machine, on an industrial embroidery machine. If you have an industrial straight stitch machine, it is more likely going to be on the right side or the inside of the machine, but there are different 
different machines, many different machines, and you just need to know which way your needle needs to go in. But the problem is, how do you get the right angle? So we're going to um, just quickly go through this again. Scarf at the back, the long groove of the needle is at the front, and of course our needle eye is at the bottom. Little tip, always make sure you put your needle up as far as it will go, because if you don't put it up all the way, then it is too low, and it was the timing, that'll upset your, your uh, stitch formation, because effectively the timing's out on your machine then, and you can also damage your machine. So make sure the needle is inserted all the way. Now, the little gadget we have is called the needle setter, and. Uh, uh, some of you may have already been using the little needle um, cylindrical magnets, and we can put those on a needle, and it kind of does a similar thing, but these guys tend to jump around and go everywhere. They're very small, they're very easy to lose. So we've taken that magnet and we've actually designed a, um, the needle setter, which actually will also help you set the needle into the machine as well. Pop that up there. So I've got my needle here. Uh, obviously you can't see it very well because they're quite small. And um, I want this needle to be inserted into the machine so I can use this as an inserting tool as well. And all I do is I can pop my needle down into there with my scarf on the back. I can see my scarf is at the back there. And I can now insert that into the machine. So I might take needle six out of the machine. So I'll just remove the thread from there. In fact, I might even remove that bit of thread completely take needle six out and um, actually I'll insert that needle back in there so I won't use that one we'll use the one that we just took out so all you got to do look at your needle identify your scarf make sure that is at the back pop that into your needle inserter like this I can then pop that down into the foot back under there and I can now push that up all the way using my needle inserter and at this point, just nip up the, the screw and we'll see how correctly we have the needle inserted. Now, the beautiful thing about this, and I'll, I'll just explain this, when they manufacture needles, the long groove on the front is basically um, grooved out of a round piece of um, wire, which they make needles of. Once they put that groove there, that means that the two edges of that groove forms a flat, um, a flat surface if you like because it's no longer rounded it's two edges and that means that's if I put a, a hard um, a hard object up against that or a flat object it will it will be flat there's no curvature on the front of the needle that means when I put my magnet on there it's got a flat surface to work work with which is how this works so now that I put needle six in we'll just see if I've done it correctly all I've got to do is put my needle magnet on my needle setter on the needle and it will find the flat position. So we'll just put that back there. You can just see, hopefully the, we're picking that up on camera, see how it just finds the location. So as you can see, this needle is inserted exactly square because the arrow on my needle setter is pointing perfectly to the back of the machine. Now that, and that will work. However, there's a little tip on embroidery machines in particular. We, we actually want the needle to be slightly, ever so slightly angled around so as that the needle setter is pointing a little bit to the left. And we're looking at pointing backwards through the machine. In other words, we want the needle setter to be around a little bit to the right at the front, but it will be pointing to the slightly left, if, that's, if that makes sense. I'm gonna show you how we do that and how you set the needle easily. And I like to use an old needle um, that's got a, still got a reasonable point on it. And I can actually just pop that needle, the point of the needle, into the needle eye of the needle I've just put in there. Just gently hold that. I can then undo my screw while my needle setter is still sitting in place. Whoops, pop that back in there. And now I can just turn my needle by using the needle that I've got stuck in the needle eye. And you can see it's now showing me the direction that my needle is set. And ideally, I want my needle to be set just a little bit, pointing a little bit left. And so now you can see the needle setter is now on a slight angle, just pointing a little bit to the left at the back of the machine. And that will give me the optimum stitching. Now sometimes um, you'll, you'll have a machine and the needle's in, in inserted incorrectly, and I'm going to show you an example. So I happen to know that this needle with the gold thread there is incorrect because I made it that way, but I'll show you what it looks like. So if I take the thread out of that needle eye and I take my needle setter, and now I just put that on the needle and just put it on straight and let it find its position. And look, that's pointing way, way wrong. So it's pointing the opposite direction of what we want and on quite a severe angle. So that is definitely not right. 
Uh, let's check the other needles. That one's fine. And this is all you've got to do is you just put the needle on there and it, it'll just automatically find its position and you'll know if it's right or not. I generally do take the thread out of the needle eye just to be sure, but even if it's not, it probably doesn't matter to be honest. The thread will find its, its position within the front groove of the needle and that's all you've got to do. See how it finds its place? It's so easy. A little bit, much easier than using the little tiny magnet. So um, I love it. So let's go ahead and fix this one, which is now currently nowhere near correct. And all I've got to do again is take my old needle, pop it into the needle eye, and then undo the screw, and just rotate the needle eye around using the needle that's stuck in the eye there. Tighten up the screw, and that needle is now set. How easy is that? So if you've, if you've been challenged getting your needles inserted correctly and uh, not sure of the angle, this thing is a game changer and is available right now. And if you have an industrial sewing machine, it doesn't have to be an embroidery machine and it takes round shank needles, it will work just as well on that. Just remember you need to know which side the scarf has to be on. So, and of course on an embroidery machine, it's always at the back. And then as I said, just slightly angled as we've shown and that will give you the optimum stitching results. So I hope that helps. You now know how a stitch is formed. You now, now know how important it is and definitely how important it is to get those needles in correctly and uh, should improve your embroidery experience. So happy embroidering and sewing. Cheers.